Enthalpy change for a reaction. There are seven ways to measure delta H, and we're going to look at one of them today in the jungle. Here is my enormous calorimeter. If I burn a known mass of fuel and heat a known mass of water, and I know the temperature change of that water, I can work out delta H combustion for the fuel. So let me set fire to the fuel, heat that known mass of water. Oh, you can see the smoke, that fuel's not burning completely. So my experimental value is probably not going to be as high as it should be. Let's extinguish the flames now. Uh, and at this stage, you'd measure the temperature change with that big orange thermometer. Now, this experiment gives notoriously poor results. So this is how you can improve it. If I was to put a lid on top, I could... Oh, it's Dr. Atkinson. What's he doing in there? Hot, 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 hot. Let's cool him down. Pop him in some water. There we go. Oh, it's not very deep. Into the waterfall with you, sir. Oh, this reminds you of Jules' experiment when we first worked out some stuff about temperature. Alrighty, so uh, that calorimeter needs a lid on it to keep the energy in from the experiment. Of course, you still need a little hole for the thermometer, but that's no problem. Now, the calorimeter itself actually gets hot, and that the IB doesn't expect you to account for that quantitatively, but they do want you to know that if you insulate it, that will give you better results. Oh, I've rather foolishly insulated the bottom of it, so heat can't get in now. Right, let's, uh, let's de-insulate that. Alrighty, so stick a lid on and insulate it. That will improve your experimental results no end. I'm lost. Completely lost. Lost, lost, oh, lost. Ah, oh, so that's why the plane crashed. Never put Teletubbies in charge of avionics. Let's do something quantitative next. Enough of this silliness. Well, let's look at an easy one first, but I'll throw a few tricks in, maybe as well. So water's heated by the combustion of methanol. Find delta HC for methanol in kilojoules per mole. And here's some data. Well, first, let me draw the experimental setup. Oh, no, C is combustion. So that's burning in oxygen, delta HC. So the setup is a little burner with my calorimeter above, a known mass of water in the calorimeter, thermometer to measure the temperature change of the water and fuel let's say methanol and to make it even easier i've burnt 3.2 grams of methanol now the sig figs as usual are not going to be fantastic but you're here for the concepts not the sig figs all right now the ib gives a slightly different equation to this one they say that delta H is Q, and it's essentially the same thing as far as the IB are concerned. And the IB also doesn't put this minus in. But they always ask about combustion, so then you forget to put it in later. So I'm going to stick with delta H equals minus N cat. That's what we call it here. So Q is delta H. In IB, that's the same thing. So the mass of what gets heated is M. C is the specific heat capacity of what gets heated. And delta T is the temperature change of what gets heated. They might try and trick you and give you other temperature changes for, for, for other things, but no, no, it's what gets heated, the mass, the specific heat capacity and the temperature change of what gets heated, not what does the heating. All right then, let's put the numbers in. So, uh, Kilogram of water gets heated. The specific heat capacity of water is that. And I'm going to use the kilograms one. Make sure the units are the same. And the temperature rise is 10 Kelvin. So if you multiply all that together, that gives you 400, sorry, 41.8 kilojoules. Now I put the minus in, just to remind myself, it's easy to forget exothermic 
the IB wants you to know that exothermic reactions are neutralization and combustion. That's our experimental data, minus 41.8. So that was in my experiment. Now we want it in kilojoules per mole. I didn't burn a mole. I want to know how much energy is released in a mole. I didn't burn one mole. I burned, well, let's work it out. Well, how convenient. 0.1 moles. So take those two numbers and have a little think about them. That much energy from that many moles So that's how many kilojoules per mole. All right then, that was an easy one. Let's look at a nasty one. So uh, calculate delta H, C for methanol, heat of combustion for methanol, and compare it to the theoretical value. Let's assume the same setup as before, but I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of data. Some of it relevant, some of it irrelevant. Then we're gonna go through it to see what we need and what we don't need. So essentially, it's what's being heated. That's what's really gonna be important here. So a whole bunch of data. Now in England, if something's there to distract you, we call that a red herring. Or is that a red herring itself? Who knows? A bit more data. And here's the red herring. So now we're going to go through the data and try and work out what's needed and what isn't. He's exploring and... Specific heat capacity of water. Yes, I need that. But methanol, no, I'm not heating methanol. The final and initial temperature of methanol might be interesting, but I'm not actually heating that. I do need to know how the mass of methanol changes, though. And the initial and final mass of water, I don't need the final mass. I just need to know how much water was heated. If those two masses aren't the same, then something's gone wrong. All right, so here's the equation. There's the mass, the specific heat capacity, again in kilograms, and my temperature change for the water. Cancel the units just to make sure. Yeah, 8.34 kilojoules. Now, once again, that's just for my experiment. The data booklet has it per mole. So we're gonna to need to turn this into kilojoules per mole. So I didn't burn a mole, how many moles did I use? Well, moles is mass over molar mass. That was in the question. I can work out 32 grams per mole from the periodic table. All right, that's how many moles of methanol I burned. And then it's just a simple division to get kilojoules per mole value. Lovely, and now I've got to compare that to the data booklet because that's what the question asked me to do. So percent error, theoretical minus experimental or experimental minus theoretical it has to be an absolute value, so it doesn't really matter. Keep forgetting that minus, you see. <laughs> And so comparing the two values of theoretical and experimental, that gives me a percent error of 39%. Easy.